hi guys welcome to the video so before we begin i just wanted to say thank you for such another wonderful shop update so i'm really glad that everyone was able to get what they wanted and it wasn't such a rush so there was you know plenty there for everyone so really happy about that um and yeah i wasn't able to get this third video done for saturday so i am uploading it today i hope you've all had a wonderful weekend um, I have done a little bit of knitting this morning which is really nice I'll show you at the end I'm finally getting uh, something started it's just really small but yeah um, okay so this video is about a Roman Schmoll palette that I am creating so these are artist quality watercolors I get them from Jackson's and they are full pans which is really exciting and they're quite affordable and you guys have mentioned them for quite a while and I hadn't really, um, they were on the wish list, but you know, like there's so many things on the wish list, so I hadn't really uh, tried them for a while, but then I got a few to try and I was really impressed with them. So I have been collecting this little palette. I'm putting it in this Blackwing box. So you can see the box there. It's not available anymore, but you, um, yeah, but you, I wish they would bring it back, but you can see um, that I just put a dab of water on there to let those reactivate. And now I'm going through and swatching. So the first one that we swatched was Van Dyke Brown and you can see the beautiful like granules. That's what I really love. And I'm, I'm really happy that this brand has some of those type of colors. So the next one we swatched was Iron Brown Chrome, I think. This one is Cypress Raw Umber. And so I will list and, you know, link these below. Um, this one is Kaput Mortuum, again, like one of my favorites. And th theirs is a really beautiful version of it. So you can see already there's quite a few of like the Violet Earths and those like uh, deep browns. Um, and this is a very very pigmented color so you can see here that I'm actually cleaning off my brush and I'm pulling some of that color up um, this one here is potter's pink and their potter's pink is a really really beautiful one so yeah I really like this um, this one here I got it and I think they've changed it just to the name tint but I feel like the color came out a little bit pinker on their swatches so I'm not sure if I got the wrong one or if that's just the color but um, it's similar to Chinabresso but a little different. So this one here is the only one that's not Roman Schmalls. It's from Earth Mineral Arts. It's one of my favorites, the um, Shell Harp Light. And you can see that's in like a little tin. Um, this one here is a green. This is Malachite. It's a really, really beautiful natural green. So, and again, it has some of like those granules, not just granulation, but it actually looks, you can see the pigment, which is what I really love. Uh, this one here is a green gold and then this one here is um, olive olive green light I think um, yeah they're fairly similar there so one of these may go to just make room for something else um, this one here is glauconite again another natural one and really really beautiful this one is Viridian, so it's just that really luscious kind of, uh, you can see they're like a, a really nice kind of bright, uh, brighter green. Um, yeah, I like just adding that in um, like, anyway, like pops of color and, and also neutralizing it. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the next video. but. This one is the Shell Harp Light by Earth Mineral Arts. This one is was in my top favorites last year and yeah, I really love this one. So next we have, I believe, Ultramarine Violet. And this is just a beautiful version of this color. And then the next one I got is the Ultramarine Pink, but I already know that I wanna change this one out for the Cobalt Violet Light because I just, um, like I talked about in my last video, I like the clearer color to start with and then I can mute it and kind of change that how I want it. Um, so yeah, um, really beautiful colors. I'm really happy with, you know, um, how this palette is coming together. So I think I can add, so like I may take out one of the greens and then I, I'm going to replace the ultramarine pink and then I 
uh, well, I think I can add five more. So I'm thinking of like the cobalt um, teal and then the Vivianite I know I want for sure. And maybe the naphthol red and lemon yellow and the quin magenta. I'm not sure. Maybe Aquarius brown as well. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, um, but in my last video, we talked about a couple of different palettes and I showed you a new plein air one I was putting together. And that has a, like some more expensive colors, some creamy colors. And I wanted to show this one because it's a fairly similar palette. You can see like the colors are fairly similar to that one. I can add a few more to kind of make it, um, you know, a bit more um, line up. But it's, um, it's more affordable, but it's still the same kind of beautiful... Um, quality of a palette and so I wanted to do a to kind of show that I wanted to do a similar painting to the one that we did with the other palette so we are still working on these Canadian geese from the park and yeah I just wanted to do a different version of that so I started with the malachite and again you can see that I am starting with um, softer colors lighter colors I put in a little Viridian. I'm, I'm just trying things at this stage. So I haven't painted with this palette before. I haven't really mixed these colors. So I wasn't really sure, you know, so I'm just working that out. And um, so I put a bit of the green gold on. You can see like that was too, just so intense. And I think it may have Nicolazo yellow in it. I think that may be why it's um, kind of taking over, which is, that's why I don't use Nicolazo yellow, just because of the um, intensity and how it kind of takes over the painting. So I pulled that out of the tissue and then um, I am just mixing and kind of trying a few different greens here to see what I like. And then you can see like I'm mixing some of the potter's pink with some of the browns there. And I'm also adding white. So I really love to add white to get the milkiness of um, and consistency of those different colors. So I'm using the Grumbacher Titanium White, which is my favorite. I haven't actually tried any of the Aquarius ones yet, but um, I also really love the Blocks one, which I got in the ceramic. Um, the, it's like a really large ceramic pan, which is really beautiful which I think is the one I will mostly use with this palette but um, and I got it sort of for this palette in mind but just for ease of um, filming I just put a little half pan in um, in there so I started the sky with the Schmincke Ice Blue which if you've seen the last video you know I've been really really loving this color again it's a very pale color um, I'm adding a little bit of that uh, the other shimmer color so I've just <laughs> gotten lost there so I have I've uh, um, added a little bit of the shimmer color there but you can use like one of the blues and um, like a pearl white and then you can add just a touch of a purple to create like a little bit of a um, lavender tones there just deepen it a little bit so then I'm going into uh, the what I thought was the reflections here but then as the painting kind of evolved I thought this looks more like a tree branch kind of coming out so I just went with that and made it less of a reflection and more of the tree. Okay so one of my favorite artists is Henry Sidener or Henri Le Sidener. So I I really really love his work and I will link to like a blog page that I've done of kind of favorite artworks and I have like I really love his work so um, he was it says his so I'm just going off Wikipedia here it says he um, contained elements of impressionism with the influences of Manet, Monet and the pointillists discernible in his work he was a skilled nocturne painter so uh, when you look up nocturne it is um, a, a term coined to describe a painting style that depicts scenes evocative of the night or subjects as they appear in a veil of light in twilight or in the absence of direct light so I think this is really beautiful and that is like I love that I love that style of painting and um, that 
creating that mood so and then it also says he was an intimist painter and then when you um, click on that link it says uh, particularly personal domestic interiors so you know having lunch or just those quiet moments that you're kind of going around your day you know just putting the laundry on or um, unpacking the dishwasher just really nice um, moments that that they then take and then they are creating as painting so I really love that as well um, and it says the main interest of the intimates was their own life such as portraying their family members instead of focusing on more general topics and then um, French art critic Camille defined intimism as a revelation of the soul through the things painted or the magnetic suggestion of what lies behind them um, through the description of their outer appearance the intimate meaning of the spectacles of life so I think that's really lovely um, and then Um, do, hey, you want to go to Phoebe? Hang on, hang on. So just like personally, what those, you know, small moments mean to a life, how they, you know, affect someone, how, how important they are. What? <laughs> Lol, as just demonstrated by our cat and my sister. So, yeah, um, and then it also says... Um, the movement, while the movement is often associated with Impressionism, the intimists diverged from Impressionists in abandoning a focus on formal accuracy and depiction of light, colour and perspective in favour of emphasised texture, exaggerated palette and merged figure and ground. So, yeah, I really love that and I am inspired by, you know, both Impressionism and this kind of other style um, that Henry Sidner does so yeah and this kind of the the nighttime painting and you know just generally being able to create different scenes so um, so and then the other thing that I'm really inspired by is this kind of Baroque um, ornamentation and this kind of Belle Epoque style so I really love that and I was kind of trying to um, bring a little bit of that into this painting as well so you can see that I um, I used sort of the like some of the flourishes on the old Limoges antique plates and just kind of looked at images of those and then used some of those curves and some of those different lines and ruffles to sort of create a, a little bit of a frame so I guess it would become a bit of a frame within a frame if it was a painting but um, yeah I really love how that turned out and this is actually one of the things that I want to continue to use. This year I haven't really had a lot of time for painting and so I really enjoyed these last couple of weeks just sitting down and sort of working through some of this. Um, so here I'm actually using a liner brush to sort of create some of these feathers and then I just um, I'll wait for so I you can see like I'm doing a few different glazes here so I wait for one layer to dry and then I will add some more detail and then I wait for that to dry and then I will add uh, yes yeah, some more so and I'm, we're also doing this in the Hannibal nostalgia sketchbook um,
so yeah that was just a little forage into painting and again like this could use a little bit more work but I just kept running out of time and needing to get the uh, videos finished and things so but it was so enjoyable um, doing these paintings and these videos these last few weeks um, and also thank you for the you know messages and everything I still have a few messages to reply to on Etsy so uh, bear with me I will be doing that in the next few days and starting your orders so I'm really excited about that I guess um, this year one of the things that have been like little mini artworks have been doing your orders and I've been really enjoying those so I'm so glad that you guys are also enjoying them um, yeah so I, I want to finish with a little bit of footage of my knitting so knitting progress it's like a tiny bit of progress so um, I will show you like these first straight needles and I've just been using some scrap yarn and just knitting along knitting 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 and then purling and then just ripping that out and starting again so practicing on there and then this one is a project that's been in the works since like around sometime in winter all I've done is cast it on so very exciting there and then I saw these cashmere socks so I think I saved them on Pinterest they were like $400 and I thought how can I recreate those for my mum so I bought this um, Peeps cashmere wool from Fabulous Yarn and um, yeah I just I got the cuff or some of the you know cuff and the ribbing done this morning so I was really excited about that you can see um, these tiny little needles and at first I wasn't sure if I'd even be able to like knit with them um, but yeah I have been and yeah enjoying that process so I am just gonna show you a little bit here I'm a really slow knitter so I'm just kind of trying to learn continental which is using your left hand um, to tension the thread I think like our whole family have generally been English style knitters so um, using the right hand and yes I'm not sure how happy the grandmother would be I feel like a bit of a traitor there but I really wanted to um, learn the continental styles just so that it's a little bit quicker so when I have some time but obviously you can see at the minute it's not like quick but hopefully it will get a little bit quicker anyway so I hope you have a lovely weekend and I will see you guys the next video will be in two weeks and I'll see you then bye